If you're saying there are times where God is interdependent, entailing dependence, that must mean he loses his sovereignty. You cannot have, it's impossible, logically impossible Joshua, to have interdependent, independent beings. That's a contradiction. No, you're trying to refuse the doctrine of the Trinity. So you need to understand what the terminology is, how we use the terms and how we define them. You don't say I'm going to go from my position and say you're incorrect, no, Joshua, but I'm not going to agree with your you definition. You have not shown to me that the doctrine of Trinity, as I have defined it, okay, has anything which entails a contradiction. That's what you'll need to do to show that I'm incorrect. Oh man, we've done it so long. Oh, yeah. We just need to put a time limit on the thing. I know, I know. a Christian yet? <laughs> I know, I can see with a beard. I've always like, been a Christian. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, of course. Hallelujah. Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. Like we follow Christ. And stuff. That's good, man. When, when, when will you become a Christian? When, yeah. <laughs> Are you talking about the historical Jesus or some mythological Jesus? Come back, come back. Obviously, the historical one. The historical one. Okay, then, and if it is, then you have to say, you have to hold to certain doctrinal statements where I think don't fit well with other prophets and other scriptures. That's, that's no, but not, not a problem at all. Let's do it. Let's talk about the historical Jesus. Up to you, right? Whatever you want to talk about. Not, Trinity, incarnation, yeah. resurrection. What, what are you, first of all, have you finished your you're PhD? You're growing taller, by the way. No, no, no. no. Everyone says the same thing. I couldn't have said it. If I finish it, no. Hopefully by the end of next year, we'll be in my third year. So, God willing, we'll see what happens. Right? So, we'll God put in, put in the work. What was your thesis? So, basically, I was looking at the probability of a Christian faith, um, but it was quite general when I was looking at it. So, I had to specify it. So, the evidence that we have, certain logical contradictions within the Trinity, within um, the Incarnation, and then certain historical evidence, does it support the probability of the Christian faith? It was quite general, so I had to... What's your conclusion? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no issue. That's, I, I don't think you're gonna. I don't think you're gonna get it written. You're right. I might come. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll, I'll pass my. I hopefully I'm arguing well. I'll pass my five. Um, so I had to specify a little bit more. So I'm looking at a specific objection. Um, in case, what are you doing? Uh, your yeah. and your, so, your guy is your Christian guy. Well, yeah, he's a Christian. Oh, he, he's gonna sue you up. Yeah, but I mean, I'm not gonna be defending in front of him. So he's my supervisor, but I have to defend against a panel of atheistic philosophers. That's where you might have a problem. Why would I have a problem? Why do you think this is? <laughs> Are you going to say what kind of, what kind of, you know? I don't, I don't think I will. I think, they, I think it's logically coherent. Um, what's, what is your, what's your main argument? Yeah, okay, this is actually quite interesting. Let, let's, let's be frank. You've done a lot of research on this. Let me just come to you as a student. Right? Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. You're a teacher as well, yeah? So tell me. From your research, okay, what kind of points are you making? I mean, first of all, you said logically coherent. That's, that's, so what is your idea of logic? What is logic? Really? Okay, so um, logic is a generalization of human language. So the way that we use human language is a generalization. So we, we look at the way that we use human language and then we infer from that certain principles. That's important, that's an important yes. thing. Because I think when we don't have a, a starting point of what's logic, yes. things become convoluted. Yes, yeah, yeah, I have no problem. So when, when I say logic, yes. or when I think vernacularly, yes. the word logic is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not ready to see my God. When we use uh, the word logic vernacularly, yes, or we might well, we might refer to us refer to as common sense, yes. Yeah? But when we use it academically, philosophically, if you like, we have very specific parameters of what the word logic must mean. Right? Would you agree with me so far? Yeah, I have no So when I say logic, right, from an academic perspective, more a philosophical perspective, I mean deductive logic, abductive logic, you know, uh, inductive logic. Those things, those types of logic which have formal systems wherein which we can actually um, put things together and, and come to conclusions, right? So which of those systems do you rely upon when you, when you use the word logic? Um, what do you mean by systems? Are you saying just like deductive logic? Or are you saying well, yeah, so how do you, when you say logic, yes. 
So once again, when I say logic, I'm referring to one of those things, right? So, for example, abdu abductive logic is inference to the best explanation, if you like that. So if, if something happens today, you know, you know, I don't know. If I, if, I have a dog, if I have a dog at home, and I have a dog bone, yeah? And then I go put the food there and I leave, and the food is gone. Abductive logic will tell, will tell me, okay, that look, the dog ate the food. Yes. Even though there are possibilities that maybe the granddad ate the food or yeah, whoever, yeah, yeah. but it's inference to the best explanation, it's abductive logic. So I'm asking you, but I'm asking you, so before we talk about logic, which, which system are we talking about? Okay, so, well it depends what, you, what you're looking at, the proposition that you're looking at. So, um, I would say when we're talking about the Trinity, such as something like that, when I say it's logically coherent, I'm simply saying that there is no entailment or contradiction from that proposition. Okay? Because logic is simply a, like I was saying, a generalization of human language use. And so we generalize and from that infer certain principles, such as the principle of um, non-contradiction. Right, right. The law of non-contradiction. Now you're making certain things. Like now, so, so now what you're trying to say is that from a lo logical perspective, it's not uh, incoherent, incoherent, it's not yes. contradictory. Yes. Okay, can, can I ask a question? Yes. I'm going to present for you the Quranic argument. Okay. okay. Yes. Yeah. I mean, the, tr the truth is this, uh, Joshua. Yeah, yeah. We, as Muslims, have let you guys down as Christians. Okay. Yes, yes, we have. You know why? Because we, and this, this includes me as well, yeah? yes. Sometimes we go on tangents where we philosophize a little bit too much. Let me just bring forward what the Quran says. There are three verses, or three verses that I want to bring to your attention. And then I'll tell you what the argument is, okay? One of them is in chapter 17 of the Quran. The Quran says, yeah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala amma yakuluna ulwan kabira. Allah says in the Quran, if there were more than one God, as they say, they would have they would have competed with one another to the arsh, which is the throne, right? Now the Mufassirs, the exegetes of the Quran, they say this has two meanings. Some say that it means that they will be trying to get closer to God. The other meaning is that they will be competing to get to the, to be uh, in an authoritative position. That's number one. The Quran says in chapter 21 of the Quran, which is Surah Al-Anbiya, it says, if both of them were creators, that each of those creators would have taken what they have, yes, what they have created, and they would have competed once again one another in authority. The third verse in Surah Al Mu'minun, chapter 23 of the Quran, it said that the heavens and the earth left fasadata. They would have been destroyed completely. The Quran is saying you can't have entities. Yes, you can't have more than one ultimate entity with more than one will. Number two, you can't have more than one ultimate creator. And number three, you cannot have, yes, you can't have more, uh, one, uh, more than one ultimate power. So here's, 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 here's an example, right? So you've got this brother here. And you've got this brother here. Okay. Now, if I were to ascribe all power to one of them, so I'll say this man is all powerful. Okay. And I ascribe it to him. Now, the question is, of the two of them, who is more powerful? Okay. So if you're all powerful, and you're all powerful, I ask the question now, of the two of you, who is more all powerful? Now, if all powerful by definition means there is no one more powerful than you, then that would be a contradiction. That's number one. Number two is will. Yeah. I'll jump in. Yeah. Uh, can I just tell you all three? I mean, yeah. Because it's up to you. You can jump in now. I can just tell you all three. If ultimate will belonged to him, which means, let's say, for instance, yes, you have a nice purple hat. He willed to pull the hat off your head. And in fact, no, no, no. He willed, yes, to make sure the hat stays on your head. So you have contradictory wills. In the case of contradictory wills, he wants to take it off, he wants to put it on. If I say you have ultimate ability, you have ultimate will, and you have ultimate will, where's the hat going to go? If you say the hat is going to stay on your head, then actually he's the all-powerful one. 
right? And this links to power. So power, if I say, listen, if I say, he's the all-powerful one. And we said this already. Yeah, I was saying, sorry, the uh, creative ca uh, capability, yeah? That's the third thing. Say, for example, I say, you created, you're the, you're the ultimate creator. The ultimate, I'm using very important words. He's the ultimate creator. Now you say, no, hold on. he's the ultimate creator. Many people are right. So the question is, which of the two is ultimately creating? Now, if you say they're compromising in creation, this would imply weakness on both of their behalf. Because compromise is only done in the case of weakness or inability. Can now, I, okay, yes, yes. So you got, so you got it. I, yeah. So it's about conflict in wills, and you can't have yes. two or two or more. Yeah, two or more. So we have on so first, I need to understand what's your definition of omnipotence, so, so then I can work with. Perfect. perfect. So what's your definition? My definition of omnipotence is, is power or strength that cannot be. Yes. Uh, that cannot. Uh, that that cannot be subordinated. Okay. In any case. So I disagree with that definition. I'll say the okay. definition okay. that I would work with and most um, philosophers who study this topic would say omnipotence means um, the ability to perform any action that is logically possible. Okay, okay. No, so sure. omnipotence is so let's say, you know, so silly when someone says can God create a stone that three every form to live? Yeah. No, that doesn't go against God's action because it's not logically possible. Even if we go with that definition. Yeah, so I'm saying go with that definition. Yeah, cool. Now you're then basically saying within that framework that there can't be two beings. But, but there's, there's something I would like to add to that definition before you continue. Right? The, abil the ability to, uh, to do any action that isn't logically incoherent, yeah? That's fine. What we would say from an Islamic perspective, and I want to I want to bring this to your attention, okay? And, and you can go free to comment. We have two kinds of attributes of God. One of them is called Sifatul Dhatiya which means intrinsic attributes of God. Is that, is that what you mean? And the other ones are called as sifat or fi'aliyya, the actions of God. Okay? So, what we would... Yeah, the actions of God. I have no issue with that, so yeah. I'm saying... No, 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 no. What I was going to say, our yeah. principle is as follows, right? And you might, you might agree with this. Right? We would say the things which God would not do, for instance, are those things which go against his attributes. So, for instance, some people say, does God lie? Could God lie? We would say God wouldn't lie because it goes against his attributes of truthfulness, for example, right? of justice. So, for us, the attributes of God are the deciphering uh, things for us where we, we decide if something is, yes? Yeah, I, I have no problem. I'm just saying, so I, I can work with that. I'll yeah. define it a little bit different. Yeah. I'll yeah. just say it's logically impossible for God to lie because God, by definition, has an essential attribute of perfect goodness. So if he was then to go and lie, it would be saying that he doesn't have an attribute. Right, so, so the question, so the question I just, now I'll is, just, go yeah. back to the wills and the So, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. with yeah. that, yeah. Yeah. how you then show it's logically possible is saying that this scenario doesn't entail a Did you put this in your writing, by the way? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah. So oh, you mentioned this. What, what do you mean, sorry? You know this argument I put forward to Oh, yes, yes, yes. Did you respond to yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. So what did you write? Paradox of omnipotence. So, oh, you so call it, like, is yes. that what it's called? Yeah? yeah, so I mean, it's been debated quite a while right. by the medievals. John Duns so Scotus um, arguing right against this and things like that. So it, it's, a, it's a philosophical issue. It's saying, can there be more than one omnipotent being? Because right. they will have conflicting wills. This is a fine argument. So they'll, they'll have conflicting wills. Yes. Well, all I have to do is show you that it's logically possible. That there is a scenario where it doesn't entail a contradiction. Because to say something's logically impossible is to say that that opposition entails a contradiction. Okay? Now, I just, say that again, sorry. sorry no, one more time. To say something is logically impossible it's just to say the no, no, I haven't said. One that, that's not the argument I put forward. I just want to make it clear. Right? What is the argument? My, no, no, because it's important that you have in front of you exactly what I'm saying. Okay, so let me so, understand. Yeah, yeah. So, what I'm saying is that if we have two entities which are separate persons, yes, which are ultimately powerful, ultimately uh, creative in their capacity, yes. and ulti ultimately willing at all times, yes. at all times. Yes. So in other words, you cannot conceive of a time where any of those entities are not ultimately willing something, yes. are not ultimately putting something into creative capacity, okay. are, not ulti are not ultimately maintaining or sustaining yes. something. Yes. In that scenario, in that scenario, it would be contradictory to say that the wills, had they or if they are different or autonomous, autonomously different, then 
one will and the other will can coexist. Yes, yes. So, yes. so you're saying exactly what I'm saying. You're saying it's logically impossible. It's a little bit different. Yeah, but it's logically impossible that, or logically incoherent. Yes. That there's a scenario with like two omnipotent beings who have yes. independent wills. Okay. So I'm ultimately creating things like that at the same time. You yes. can't have that scenario. Yes. Now, all I have to do to show that it's logically possible is give you a scenario where that is actually so, where it is a logically possible scenario. Okay. So I agree. Sorry? He's just going to give them one scenario, but he's saying in all no, scenarios. Yeah, no, no, that's, that's, that's the point, that's, that's what's the point what's of what's what's to, show, to show coherence, yeah. all you have to do is show that the statements do not contradict. Okay? No, 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 no. What's that? What's that? Yeah, sorry, 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 I didn't let you speak for a while. Yes, so, yes, we're going. When, if you're saying that at all times, in all possible worlds, this thing cannot be true. All you have, that's what it means when you say something's logically but, you know, no, now you're, but, but before you yes. the straw man, because I, I I'm not fear, giving you a straw. No, no, I fear a terrible straw man coming ahead. Why? Why? Because now yes. you, you've changed my initial um, statement. You, so in all can times I show you? Okay, can I explain no, no, no. to you? What, what I'm saying is this. Before we talk about all times and all possible worlds, yes, because I know the argument. We're taking a step back here. We're saying the world as we know it, the principles as we know them, and these principles as we know them will create a capacity in this. I want you to solve it. And by the way, there's a difference between a statement. Yes? Oh, sorry, sorry, Joshua, I apologize. I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I do, I'm being, I am. I will let you talk. There's a difference between a valid logical statement and a sound one. So if you come and give me a valid logical statement, for example, if I say all unicorns are white, George is a unicorn, therefore unicorn, uh, therefore George is white. Yeah, that's a valid logical deduction, but it's not sound because no, no, it's not. Uh, one second, yeah, you, you confused two, two things. Yeah. You said there's no such thing as a valid logical statement. That doesn't make sense. No, I didn't say it. Doesn't no, say, I didn't say uh, that. No, no, one there's a difference between a valid one and a sound no, 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 one. No, no, no. Statements. That's incorrect. You can have a valid logical argument yes, and yes, a sound yes. logical. Yeah, that's you can't right. have a valid statement. Fine, that fine, make fine. Sense. Oh, you can still have a valid statement as well. No, logically, that, there's no but term. Valid now. statement. Valid. Uh, sorry, no, a valid argument. What yeah. you need to say is that's an coherent statement or that's an incoherent statement. It's nothing to do with validity. Okay, validity is only related to arguments. Okay, construct yeah. your argument. Vernacularly, I can use the word valid with statements as well. No, but I'm saying if we're talking about philo uh, philosophical yes, yes, language, yeah, yeah. deduction. That doesn't work. Yeah, you're right. Go ahead. So, all I was saying to you. When you are trying to show something is logically possible, something is coherent, yes, yes. all you have to do is give you a scenario where the statement doesn't entail a contradiction. If that is so, then you approve the, no, the statement no, but is that's, coherent. I don't agree with this. Let me yes, tell you why, why, I don't, not? why not. Let me tell you why I don't agree with that. Why? Why? Tell me, please. We're not looking for a scenario. We are looking for. Sorry, this is the point. We're not looking for a scenario. We're looking for this statement or well, this reality to be coherent in all cases, not in one case. No, no, you misunderstood me. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. One scenario, yeah. it doesn't. No, because, do you know why? The, the logical principle is my friend, the exception of a general rule, can, the exception, if you have a general logical principle, and we're able to find ex exceptions of it, the exceptions of that general rule cannot define the, cannot redefine the general rule. So if you're, if you're able to find okay. an exception, all you can do at best is show me that this is the exception to generality. You're talking about, you're talking about two different things. No, but you're saying when, a one scenario. Second, I don't agree with that. Second, yes. Coherence and truth. When you say something is coherent or something is incoherent, you're saying at all times this cannot be so. So what you then yeah, have to show... Yes. But then what you have to show them is one example where it is so. If that is, if that is done, then you're showing that that statement that this cannot be so at all times is false. Yes, that's, that's what you do with coherence. No, 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 I understand that question. Now, yes. So no, no, that's what I then the said point, to, the point, the point That's I'm what I then said to you that all I have to do is show you a way that this could be so that proves coherence. Yeah, that's yeah, what well, I have you, to do. you have to show me a way that this could be so in bearing in mind the initial statement I made. Because so my I initial think, argument yes, is as, long as, I do, as long as I talk about your statements, no, my, two conflicting wills, me, yes, two two wills, conflicting wills power, yes. and, uh, and uh, creative capacity. Yes. But not only this, yes. and here's, here is the key building block that I want you to remember. Okay. At all times. Three words. At all times. Now, if you say there might be a time wherein which X could be possible, 
that doesn't mean that doesn't you can't generalize this um, this uh, th 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 this into all times. Yes. No, no, yes. No, 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 no. Okay, good. Because so at all times, yeah, it has to be at all times. Perfect. Okay, go ahead. Now, now we're in the same Because thing. God being creator, God being omnipotent, yes, yes. God being the ruler of all things or whatever. Yes, that, that happens said, all the time. Right? Those are essential properties. Of God. Yes. So we cannot lack them and be God. Yes. So yes. I'm never going to say, oh, there was a time when God didn't have them. I'm yes. Not perfect. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So, we're so, on the same page. I agree with you that you have conflicting wills. Okay. If these are the two scenarios, I if. The, these divine persons are essentially equal and relationally Okay, go ahead. If they are essentially equal and relationally equal, then you always have a conflict in wills. Now, the doctrine of the Trinity says only one of them has, co has the um, equality that we're looking at. They are Who is that? One second. There is equality in yeah. their essence, but there is a relational difference. Okay. The father ah, is the, okay. the father is the inevitable cause of the son, and the, fa the father and the son are the inevitable causes of the Holy Spirit. So there is a relational difference between the three persons, ah. but they are equal in essence. So, I'm happy you say this. Yes, so, yes, yes. if there is a relational difference, yes, yes. but there is no difference in essence, yes. then you can still have there be these three persons who have independent wills and who have all the property of omnipotence. And still exist at the time. Okay. Of the councils, the, 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 the early church councils yes. that you know of, yes. starting from Nicaea onwards, who formulated uh, the, 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 the doctrine of the Trinity in the way that you're yeah, formulating? How is it defined? No, no, no. Okay. I'm asking you a very Because what you've done here. Which I don't like the word formulated. No, no, no. Because you, you, what you've said is really, really interesting. There's a relation And I'll be honest with you, right? Yes. What you've done is essentially, you've said. There is a hierarchy within the Trinity, all right? That's what you said. A relational yes, hierarchy. A relational, relational hierarchy. hierarchy. I have no problem. You don't have a problem with that. Relational hierarchy. I have no. You don't have a problem with that. Yes, no, yeah. No, okay. No. Well, the Nicene Creed. Tell me, please. Yeah, they would have had a problem with that. Tell me, please. Why? Not, not Nicene Creed. Sorry. After the Constantinople. After Constantinople, which, there would have been a serious which creed, creed. Sorry. Which creed? Constantinople Creed. So three eighty one. Three eighty one. Tell me where there's a. There's a the, okay. Now, after three eighty one, we had. The idea of coexistence and co-equality. In what? In, no, I'm asking you. In what? You said no. no yep. I, I'm, hold on. Hold on. Uh -huh. hold on. Coexistence, co-eternality. I bring up the nice and clean. No, not Nicene, I see. I said Constantinople. Yeah, the Constantinople. Bring it up. Yeah, I'll bring it up. Uh, no, let's bring it up. Let's good, very good. Code. Now what I'm saying is that what you, you what you've just said here is really interesting because yes. I tend to agree with you. Yes. Wait a minute. What did you say? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is where. This is where. You know, I'm gonna kiss it. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh yes. Oh that yes! Yeah. Oh yes! What you've done is you've come three steps, not one or two. But because you're a Trinity believer, you've come three steps towards me. Okay? You why would I? Be? I've come nowhere near you. You've come, let me tell you why. Okay? From the creed. Yes. No, no, no. What we know of the council, the early church council. Yes. I'm not. I'm talking here about after 381. Wait, wait, one second. After Theodosius wait, the second was in charge. Yes. Which shows you have been bullied by Christian At and after. So we're talking about the when the Constantinople Creed came into being. Okay. Now I'm. Now when Theodosius the second. Yes. Yes. So what's your point? When he when he spread Trinitarianism throughout the Roman Empire and he refused to allow anyone to believe in anything other than Trinitarianism. This is the time we're talking about. No, no, why did he do that? For political reasons. You, uh, I'll just yes, as well. But, 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 well. From my perspective, for, as an historian, or from a historical perspective, I believe there was some kind of syncretism. Uh, there was a syncretic religion that was now formulated. Of Christianity and the old Greek gods. Yes. No, 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 it's not unfounded. Many people say this. Evidentially. No, it's not evidentially. So, evidentially, if you look at the canons, of the council at 381, you have nothing to support that I'm going to come and we'll talk about this. I am saying, I'm telling you that a historical reading of that early develop of the early uh, time, 381, would, would bring someone to believe that Trinitarianism became a secret, a, 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 a can I just stop you there? Amalgam of, 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 of no, stop you there. We're, we've gone off yeah. on that tangent that I took. Right, right. Of, of, of Greek mythology. So, and what now, I, now. just to just to recap, what I said. I said there's a relation. He's running away. He's running away. I say. So, so, when you become a Muslim, there's a relational distinction yes, between yes. the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Perfect. There is no distinction between their essence. Okay, that's right. So okay. now 381, no, show no, me how no, no. <laughs> Now, this is how they relational difference, difference meaning what? Meaning what you're saying is that one of them is more powerful than the other. I never said... 
No. no he then you don't understand what okay. I just said. No, no, no. What, what, what's the relation? What's the nature of the relation? I just said Go ahead. there is a relational difference in that the father is the inevitable cause of the son. No, I'm not one talking about causation. Yeah. One second. Yes. Yeah, but let me Apologies. tell you what I meant. Right. The father is the inevitable cause of the son. Okay. okay. The father and the son are the inevitable causes of the Holy Spirit. So one second. Yes. There is a relational difference in that way. There is no difference in essence in Josh. that. In that, Josh. the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are consubstantial. Josh, Josh, yes. I made this argument very clear. You've made, you've, you've changed the discussion. I've changed it. You have. What I have. Because I talked to you about creation, will, and uh, omnipotence, and you've, you've changed it into causation. I never. Then I haven't done. I've right. understood so, my argument. Okay, can I ask you a question? Direct question. What is the relational difference between the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit? Relative uh, uh, relation in relation to will, yes, power, and will power and uh, creative capacity. You're confusing terms. No, 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 no. no. I'm no, asking you, a simple question. And you're, no, no, Josh, please. I'm asking a very specific yes. question. What is yes the relational difference? Is there a relational difference? Yes. Or if not, I've been saying that. No, no, please, tell, please tell me one more time. Okay. What is, is the relational difference? between the Father and the Holy Spirit, respective to three attributes: autonomous will. Creative capacity, creative capacity, and number three is uh, what? omnipotent power. Please ask me. You're not. No, you can't tell me if that makes sense. No, I'm saying to your point. No, I can ask a question. Yes, can you tell me? Yes, I'm you haven't done that. Yes, yes. Omnipotent is the essential attribute of divinity. Okay. Essential attributes, agreed. such as omnip omniscient, yes, agreed. 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 Those are essential attributes agreed. that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit agree. There is no distinction. Okay. okay. Now, is there a where distinction? There, related? Where there is a distinction is relation. How, how they how, relate. How, how is it? Yes. How. And I said the Father is the inevitable cause of the Son. No, we're not talking about causation. No, no. That's what they meant. That's why it says the father begot the son. Listen, Josh, you're an intelligent guy, yeah? I apologize. No, but you, you're cutting me off. Oh, I apologize. So I'm I apologize. If you look at the creed and what the creed says, what Which does one? it say, the relationship Which between one? the father and uh, the father? Okay. So when it says here, I can read it to you. I brought it up. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so it says here, uh, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, make of heaven and earth, the Lord, the principle of the middle. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son, the son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all ages. That's interpreted as the inevitable cause of the sun. No, that's your yes. interpretation. No, but that is how it's No said. problem. Anyways, either way, I'll What is you. begetting mean? No problem. Yeah, you can say this. Yes. That means to cause. No problem. Yes. No, no, not really. It means to give birth. Yeah. In, in no, is that causation or not? No, no, it's not necessarily. No, no, but sorry, what? You're, you're using. You're, you're, sorry, I'm just saying it's not necessarily. But I don't care. Even if you, if yes. you say it is, I'm happy with it. Let's yes. go with it. Okay. Yes. Yes. So then you go through. Go through the Jesus. Yes, to beget now, is to cause, but to cause is not to beget. Okay. So they're not interchangeable. Yes, I didn't say that. But to beget is to cause. Yes. So that falls into what I said. Yes. Okay. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. Okay. Who with the Father and Son together is worship. All right. So you can read this and you can have the um, filioque clause. So the filioque clause says here, either the Father is the sole um, um, inevitable cause of the Spirit, or it's the Father and the Son, okay, who are the inevitable causes of the Spirit. I'm so, talking about one second. Yes, you have to understand the Good. terms. How the terms always were interpreted by the... But Joshua, you have to... You have to you, you there's an elephant in the room now. No, I'm saying you cut me off a lot. Okay, I apologize. Okay, shall so I give you five minutes to talk? No, no, I don't... I don't How many don't minutes do you want? I don't want any... Just I'll give, give me... You, I'll give you a minute. Give me one minute. Okay. So, when they are saying there is a difference between the Son and the, the Spirit and the Father, they are simply saying that the Father is the one who begets the Son, and that's interpreted as the inevitable cause of the Son. And the Father and the Son, they, um, sorry, the, the Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, which is also interpreted as the inevitable cause of the Spirit. Okay? So that's just the way that we see the distinction. Because then what they say is that the Father and the Son are homoousios. That means of the same essence. Now the essence that they're talking about is divinity. So all I've said to you here is they all share the same divine essence. Yes, they they're consubstantial, but there is a distinction relation. Why is that? The father begets the son, which is understood as inevitable okay. causing, and the father and the son um, they bring about the spirit, which is no the problem. Uh, my question, problem. my question is not relation, but once, once again, yes. you, you've done a good job talking about who caused who. I, I, I accept what you said. I'm happy with what you said. I'm willing to proceed. Okay. My second question to you is the same one that we started off with. Yes. I'm asking you about 
omnipotence, creative capacity yes. and autonomous will yes. at all times. Yes. Now, what is the number one question? Everyone can hear what I'm saying. Yes, I'm not. I'm not speaking foreign no, tongue. No, no, you're not. I'm not speaking foreign tongue. I'm not speaking foreign tongue. First question is: Is there a relational difference? Using your wording, yes. your, your phraseology, yes. is there a relational difference yes. between Father, Son, Holy Spirit in in omnipotence, creative capacity, and autonomous will? If so, what is the relation? No, there is no Oh, there is I keep on saying to you, it just doesn't yes. make sense what you're saying. I'm saying to you the relational difference between them. Can you explain to me why it doesn't make sense? Because Instead you're, you're saying, conflating two Is it ungrammatical? One second. You're conflating two different properties. The property that you're talking about, omnipotence and creative will, is to do with the essence that they share. There is no distinction there. Are they where, no, no. where there is a relational distinction is all, only in how the Father brings about the Son and how the Father and the Son okay, bring about the Spirit. That's, that's it. That's, that's I understand. I've repeated that. But no, no, time. no. It's good. So the, the only relational difference, yes. according to yourself, yes. is the relational difference in causation. Yes, no it's Not, uh, there is no relational difference yes. in creative capacity, autonomous will, yes. uh, and um, creative, uh, and uh, yes. uh, omnipotence. Those are the things. Now, we go back to square one. Do you know why? Okay. Because I ask you a question, is the father a separate person to the son? Of course it's. Yes, and is the son a separate person from the Holy Spirit? Yes. And do they all have autonomous wills? That's a bit difficult. I'd probably say they're interdependent wills. I wouldn't it, say it's a bit are. difficult. Auto I wouldn't say autonomous wills unless you define autonomous. Perfect. Now you're saying it's it's a bit. This is your words. I'm going to say exactly what you no, said. So, sorry, sorry. Then no, no, Joshua, please. Yeah, okay. I'll let, let, you, I'll, I'll let you speak. I mean, you said it's a bit difficult, which is telling in itself. It's a bit difficult. Yes. No, can no, I say no, why? No, no, hold on. I'll tell you. Okay. okay. No, listen to what he said. Listen, <laughs> Joshua. The people here are listening. Okay, I'm listening to you. You are my superior in knowledge in this field there's no doubt about that i am taking knowledge from you yes you're finishing off your phd you spent how many years researching this issue two years and a bit two years and a bit you've nearly finished i'm not speaking to a layman am i speaking to a layman no, i need to understand what you meant by autonomy did you mean that they have wills that could conflict so that the father could decide i want to do something completely different than the son no then i disagree but if you're saying autonomy in that the father has his own will, autonomy. It, one second, one free will. Yeah. One second. Yes. The father has his own will. Yes. The son has his own yes, will. Yes. And yes. 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 But I don't have a problem. Oh, you don't. That's know. what I meant. Okay. So if you were saying that they could have wills that would conflict, then I have a bit of a difficulty. With that. That's what I'm saying. That's my only problem. Now, can you just repeat the question? Right? I will repeat yeah. it. Yes. Okay, what was your question? You said it. You heard it. You said it. You're a good showman, by the way. Proud of the character. You're a good Listen. showman. Oh, anyway, continue. Yeah. Listen to me. Yeah. You said that the wills are interdependent. If the wills are interdependent, they must be dependent by virtue of necessity. You cannot have, it's impossible, logically impossible, Joshua, to have interdependent, independent beings. That's a contradiction. You can either have Interdependent, dependent, or independent, non-interdependent. Too many dependents. No, 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 no. The question now, he wants to know the answer because he's been patiently waiting for the scholar of Christianity, and the people have been, he's been waiting. I want to know. Sorry, Joshua. Sometimes I get into the mood like this. I do it at home as well. Trust me, I do. In the mirror. Right? I, do it, <laughs> I do it with my family members when I when I when I feel you know when I feel good. The question is this. How can you explain the fact that God is all powerful, dependent being? That's my question. Okay. So my terminology was interdependent. What I mean by that is yes. it's a Trinitarian principle that all of the actions of the Godhead are done together. So the Father performs something through the Son and by the Holy Spirit. So anything that the Father does, creates, is done through the Son and by the Holy Spirit. So they're interdependent. One second. Yeah, so that's what I meant. So, so they need each other. What? You're inferring certain things that I didn't say. I love you, man. I think we. I think. Listen, here's a serious discussion. So let's define terms on some answer. So it's a Trinitarian principle that all the, all the persons of the Trinity work together. 
And the father never does something by himself. The son never does something by himself. And the spirit never does something by himself. They do it together. When I meant interdependent is that the will of the father will be carried out through the son and by the spirit. So there is no problem there. You can then try and deduce, does that mean he's dependent but omnipotent? But it doesn't follow from what I've said. Okay, Joshua, Just I think everyone here gets the point. I think we've... Yeah. Yeah. No, no, no. Why, why Let me tell you something, Joshua. You know, when you give your proposal, and now you've got the three people, it's three people usually, isn't it? They're sitting down and asking you questions. Do you know the night before, what might happen? I'm not saying this. You might have a dream. You might have a dream, okay? You might have a dream that there's one person in that seat, and maybe it's me. And and that person's asking you a very simple question: How can you have an interdependent, independent being? And then you're saying all these things, and then the person on my right and says, "Listen, we're not satisfied." So wait, 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 wait. And the person on my left says, "Look, I don't, I don't get it. It's incoherent." When have, in my statement have I said that there is an interdependent, independent being? When have I said? That? Well, we already said. Yeah. Well, no, I told you how you refer, well, I've inferred that from what you said. It's a false inference. If it's maybe, so they're separate. you said they're separate. Then they said they're separate. You said that they're all separate autonomous Sorry, entities. Just being separate in something means that you are. So it's God, it's God not independent. Is the Father not independent? What's it, what's it? You're in these are no, no. Is he not independent? These are yes. <laughs> you are falsely inferring things that don't. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. So, I am wrong. Is, is God independent? No, man. If you're going to speak seriously, that's a okay. I, I call it. Because these are serious. Okay. I'm sorry. So, I'm sorry. I never said in my statement that there, that the Trinity, that the Trinitarian doctrine, purports there to be an interdependent, independent being. I never said it because that would be logically incoherent. I never said. It. I said that there are separate and distinct persons within the Trinity who are interdependent. That doesn't mean that they are independent. Are they independent? In the, I've never said they're independent. Oh, so they're not independent? No! When have I ever said they're independent? Okay, so they're dependent. <laughs> that's, how, that's how it is. So, <laughs> what is okay, what is the difference between dependent and being interdependent? Dependent. And well, interdependent. Interdependence entails dependence. No, no, I, I, I'm not asking for entailment. Tell me what the difference is. No, no, okay. Every, let me say it one more time. Every interdependent entity... Oh, let, let, I'm, not, I'm not asking no, no. that in tell me. No, no, no. Uh, let me tell you the difference. Yes. Yeah. Every interdependent entity is dependent. Well, not every dependent in entity is interdependent. Fine. But tell me what's the difference. The difference is the interdependent one has people depending on him and he's depending on someone else. Whereas the dependent one might have someone he that he's depending on and no one is depending on him. That's what the difference is. So now what's the issue? The issue is if you say that they're interdependent, they are necessarily dependent. And what's the issue? Oh, very good. No, the really issue sure. with having a dependent God is that you, you've lost omnipotence. Why have I? Because if you're dependent, you can't be all-powerful. Why? Tell me. What did because I mean by sovereign all powerful? Sovereignty. What did I mean by sovereign? I use the word no, sovereignty. I, I, sovereignty is a different... Sovereignty is, is a different... Sovereign. No. Yes. But then you conflate all the time. What you do, Mohammed, you conflate different attributes of God and properties I'm not doing anything. Yes. I'm just telling you, Allah says in the Quran, oh, no, Allah, I had Allah Samad. Uh, Samad means he's sovereign. Everything is dependent upon him. Oh. He's dependent on us. Mohammed. Well, like, you know, Mohammed. What if God is dependent on himself? Does that make sense? That's a contradiction. You can't be dependent on yourself. Why not? I'm dependent on my legs. No, no, no. You're not dependent on yourself. It's not dependent on my legs. Technically, no, that, you can actually be dependent on yourself. No, you can't. I just yes, you can. my brain to give Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You are dependent. Then you're independent. <laughs> Mami, Mami, but if, Mami. You, if you are dependent, that is the definition Mami. of independence. If Mami. you are dependent on yourself, you are independent. One second, one second. Mami, are you speaking? This is interesting. Mami. What's your name? Well, you should call yourself Muslim after this one, brother. Let's see, let's see how you did. <laughs> Mami. Listen, you're speaking to me. I'm, to I'm me. sorry. Don't just he he came that. in. He came. If you're speaking to me, because these are important topics, and we're talking about things which are quite intricate and understand. So, we need to define terms and understand what they mean, okay? okay? So, what I simply said to you that there was an interdependent being, okay? You said there cannot be an interdependent, interdependent being because then that means he's dependent. And if that he's dependent, then he's not omnipotent. Yes. Now, then I said to you at the beginning, what is the definition of being omnipotent? You agreed with me that omnipotence is, which I say, being able to perform any action that is logically possible. Yeah, that's one okay. definition. Now, uh, to, I added and you agreed with me that will work with that definition, yes? Yeah, it's Okay, good. So, now tell me how it goes against this definition of what I said. No, if you no, are no, we're not playing what? games with definition. Oh, I, no, no, listen, on. let me finish. No, no, no. So, no, no, let me finish. So, it's got something. Are you actually going to do that thing where you're going to have a proper conversation? I'm sorry. Because you're going down that path and you just want to have a script. Okay. So, speak to me properly and let's go through it. Okay. okay, it's got someone. 
Man, I'm not going to have that kind of conversation. If you want to have that conversation, so it's a dialogue. Okay, I'm fine. now saying something you don't respond to me. Not okay, things are completely random. Well, okay, okay. you see, do you know, you Chris is very clever. You're clever. Do you know why? You seem to, you've got, he's got a technique. I've done this with him many times before. No I'm not fall, falling for no this time. Uh, do you know what his technique What's is? Technique? Yes. When I ask him a, a, a hard question, you know what he does? He does this thing like I'm offended with this. What? <laughs> Sorry. I, yes, yes, yes. I know. I used to, I used to fall for it before and apologize, but I'm not going to fall for it. Yes, I did. Before, I used to ask him a hard question. You know, you did. No, 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 no. I'm going to do this. I don't feel sorry for him. Mamid, one second. Treat this. Treat. I'm sorry, man. Treat this. Yes. It's a conversation without the crowd. Yeah, okay, what right. you're doing, you're playing to the crowd, yes. and you're not actually putting forward strong arguments. Okay, okay so, so, no, so I'm saying all you're doing is laughing, ha ha ha, making fun, but okay, the crowd. I'm sorry. Do it okay. like if we were talking over coffee or whatever, right, we'll have a conversation, right. you won't be going around there, <laughs> you wouldn't do that. So, let's have a proper conversation, all right? Yes, okay, fine. All right, my question. Now, yes. no offense, you haven't offended me at all, so I have no problem with that, I don't know what you're saying. Okay, all I said to you is that let's not go down a tangent, because now you're trying to go something different. What you were saying is, I'm responding to that you said, being dependent goes against omnipotence. Now, I was saying to you that that does not, that is not true, sorry, because the definition we're working with with omnipotence is being able to perform any action that's logically possible. Now, how does that go against dependence? Okay, no, here we have it. Is God sovereign? You're not answering my is, question. Is God You're asking, no, 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 asking a question with a question. You're answering a question with a question. I've asked this question about three times. No, no, but answer my question. Yes, then yes, we'll yes. move on. I've got no, 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 hold on. Is God sovereign? I'm not going to... No, it's fine. Mohammed, Mohammed. No, no, please, please. You know, is God sovereign? Mohammed, did I just ask a question or not? Is, is God sovereign in the Bible? Mohammed, did I ask a question? Did I ask a question or not? You did, yes. yes. But so why are you asking me a question with no, a question? No, because we can't proceed until you answer this. No, no, you can. I just said to you, Listen. one second, how does dependency Go against the omnipotent definition that you've gone with. No, no, we're not going with that, that, that particular you definition. You agreed with me at the no, beginning I of the talk. No, I said that's fine. I said that's okay. And but then I added to it. I added to it and I said to you, that's not the only definition. It's not a wrong definition, yes. but it's not the, it's not what we saw in Arabic, Kamil Shamil, which means it's, it's not an all-encompassing definition. Okay, and what did you add to me? What I said to you that, yes. that I, I told you about the God's uh, Sifat, the attributes of God, etc. No, right? no, I remember. So, no, no, hold on, that's what I said. I said, I said there are two kinds of attributes of God, from a Muslim perspective. There's the Sifat Dati and Sifat Aliyah, which means that the intrinsic attributes of God. We say, that you cannot have something which goes against the attributes of God. The and you agreed with that. I have no oh, issue. Fine. So let we have to that now. That doesn't go with no, 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 no. So, so, so Joshua now, what you said about what's logically possible, that's fine. I'm saying that me and you, from both of our scriptures and from common sense, we've come to the conclusion that God is sovereign. Meaning what? Let me define sovereign. In the Quran, the word is summon. But every child knows the word summon, yes? Every child in the Muslim world should know what the word summon is. They all learn it. It's one of the smallest words in the Quran. Qul huwa Allahu ahad, Allahu summon. Say his Allah, one and only. Allahu summon. He is the eternally besought of all. Meaning, he is the sovereign. What does being sovereign mean? It means everything depends upon you, and you depend upon nothing. That is my definition of sovereignty. That is the Quranic definition of sovereignty. That, as far as I know, hold on. Sorry. That is the biblical definition of sovereignty. That is the Old Testament definition of sovereignty. So here, my question is this. If you're saying there are times where God is interdependent, entailing dependence, that must mean he loses his sovereignty. Yes, of course it does. When we normally say that it some God does God is and not you are so, to that. I'm yeah. responding. When we say that God is not sovereign because he's dependent on something, what we are normally saying is that he's dependent on something outside of himself. So he's not sovereign if he's dependent on something outside of himself. Now on another person. Now when Trinitarians say that God is interdependent, we are saying the persons within the body are interdependent. So it's dependent. Now that means then that God is not dependent on something outside of himself. No, no, no. Because Why not? Because here there are three personalities of God. I wasn't see here. This is very good. No, no, stop, stop, stop. So, 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 so. Honestly, stop okay, I'm sorry, I apologize. Okay. <laughs> no, stop, honestly. No, 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 I'm sorry, Josh. It's going to make the conversation. I'm, it's I'm not sorry, going to be a uh, fruitful conversation. I just like to see the difference. Okay. I was going to say this is a very good thing. What you've done now, yeah? You're a clever guy. She knows what I'm talking about. You done? <laughs> yes, she knows. You, you apply the straw man. Okay, this is what you call the fallacy of equivocation. Let me tell you why. So, if this man, sorry, I have to bring him in. He drops, drops on the floor right now. Yes. 
I say, can I have a doctor? Can I have a doctor? You come and say, look, I've got my PhD, I'm a doctor now. Say, I'm not looking for you, I'm looking for a medical doctor. The fallacy of equivocation is using two words, yes, which seem, can be the same word, or can be different words, but have the same kind of reality, to make a, to make a false argument. So you use the word God. I'm not talking about God, I'm talking about the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit specifically. I'm not talking about the generality of God, as per, because that's a cyclical argument. I don't believe in your understanding of God. Your understanding of God is the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit is God. My understanding of God is only Allah is God, only one God. So if you say God in reference to those three and say that, that, that God is independent because he's independent, interdependent, that's a fallacy. I'm saying to you, how could it be the case? Is, is the Father, his, sorry, sorry, is the Father sovereign? Yes or no? He is not sovereign over the Son. No. Okay, so now can I, so, no, no, you spoke, no, let me, no, can I speak? No, 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 this is important, please. This is so important. If the Father is sovereign, <coughs> and you're saying not sovereign over the Son, that is a contradiction. Why? Because sovereignty means you're sovereign over everything. There are no exemptions to sovereignty, and there can be no exemptions to sovereignty. If I say the Father is sovereign, that means to say he is eternally, sorry, he's eternally besought of all. Meaning what? Meaning he is, he, everything depends upon him, and he depends upon nothing. Not the Son, not the Holy Spirit. So if you say he is sovereign, you cannot have your cake and eat it. Yes, of course. Okay. Okay. Firstly, Again, we need to understand what you were saying at the beginning. When you are looking at terms, it wasn't a fallacy of equivocation which you brought. I, I believe it wasn't. That wasn't the issue. Uh, it was, of course. Okay, so what, we, what you need to do is understand the terminology, understand the definition that you are rejecting. You don't go and say we're working within different frameworks, okay? And because I hold to my framework, you hold to your framework, and I don't agree with your framework, I'm not going to hold to what you're saying. No, you are trying to refute the doctrine of the Trinity. So you need to understand what the terminology is, how we use the terms, and how we define them, and say how it's incorrect. No, but if they, you don't say one second. You don't. You don't say I'm going to go from my position and say you're incorrect, no, Joshua, but I'm not going to agree with your. Do you know why that's wrong, Joshua? Why? Do you know why that's wrong? Yes, why is that because wrong? the whole point of the discussion here is to find out whether the word God can be used interchangeably with the word Trinity or, or, yes. the, or the Godhead. Yes. So if you're using the word God, already meaning that, then it defeats the whole purpose of this discussion. Of course it does. No, it doesn't. But listen, but, Joshua, but one have, have your final statement. But one we usually go for about two hours no, no, no. and we need to... Yeah, so yeah, no, final no, statement. Answer, answer. Answer. Yes. Okay, yes. I don't think you've proven the case that the doctrine of the Trinity is incoherent. You've not shown to me that the doctrine of Trinity, as I have defined it, okay, has anything which entails a contradiction. That's what you'll need to do to show that I am incorrect. At the moment now, all you, you haven't done that. I've shown you how the only distinction between the three persons is relational. There is no distinction in essence. And because of that, there can be three di uh, divine persons who are omnipotent, who are ultimate, who are creators. There is no problem with that. No problem. Only if you show me that it's incoherent in what I've said, yes. that there is a contradiction, I, I answer, yes. that there is a contradiction in terms, then you can show that I'm incorrect. At the we moment, you have not done it. We have a, so, I think your whole dissertation, or your, sorry, it's not your dissertation, it's your whole thesis, yeah? Your whole thesis, I will tell your professor this, what's his name? Uh, okay, you can tell me after. Your whole thesis is based on a definitional understanding of the word omnipotent. And that definition is not, as we say in Arabic, Kamil Shamil. It is not a comprehensive, agreed upon definition. Oh, you are... No, sorry, no, Mohammed. No, Mohammed, Mohammed. One, one second, one no, second. No, no. No, I've got, I've got to jump. No, no, you are completely incorrect. No, no. If you know your okay, philosophical... No, one second. If you know your philosophical literature, you will know that the definition of omnipotence that I'm working with is the one that is okay. held no, by no, every philosopher. No problem. That studies this. No, no problem. What are you talking about? Let, let's forget about the word omnipotence. Let's no, you just... No, 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 you no, said that's completely false. Fine, fine, Joshua, I'm, false. I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Okay, thank you. Let me take the word, the wrong word, and throw it. Omnipotence, here's omnipotence. Yes? Throw it away. Where did that go? It went forward. Do you know what I'm going to use the word now? Sorry, I have to. I have to interject. It's the word sovereign. Now, I'm going to make the argument the Quran makes. Allah is someone. The argument from sovereignty. The word omnipotence, I, I don't kick up to a bit and I threw it away. Now the word sovereignty. If, here's my final argument. If we agree that the Father is sovereign, that he's eternally the sort of all, that means no, he depends upon no one. And if we say that the Father depends upon no one or no thing, nothing, that must mean to say that he cannot depend in any circumstance on the Son and the Holy Spirit. If you say this in one breath, you cannot say in another breath 
that he is inter interdependent because that would entail dependence. Interdependent is the sign of the Holy Spirit. And I think this is so clear, even though you're a very intelligent interlocutor, I have to say it's so clear that the punishment from our perspective of not believing or, or rejecting Tawheed after this clear argument has been put to you is an eternal punishment in the fire. Okay. Now, okay. now I, I will okay. say this. No, no. The Quran says, it says, don't say three, stop, it's better for you. So, That's what I'm going to say to you as my no, final statement. It's, it's like you're evangelizing to me. Yes, okay? of course, you, you no, did the no, same no, thing we're with having, me. We're having a conversation. One second, can I just respond before you, yes, before you walk off? Um, I think you have a problem with that definition of sovereignty that you thought about. It. Definition of sovereignty that you're working with. You're just working with definitions, yes. Of course you have to work with a definition. Yeah, no problem. Okay. That definition of sovereignty yes. means that God is not dependent on anything. Yes, exactly. Yes, yes. Now you have an issue with it. It's not God. Your father. What well, you say? You're not your, your dad, but the father that you refer to it. Yes. You're saying God no, is you're not, not your father. Yes. You're saying God is not dependent on anything. Okay? Now you have a, a few issues with that. Philosophically, you're looking at it. because God is dependent on His properties. Okay? He's dependent on the property of omnipotence to exist. So he's, he's dependent on himself. Listen, listen, he's no, he's no, independent. No, 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 no. Understand my terms. If he's dependent on himself, he's understand, independent. Understand my terms. Did God create the property of omnipotence? No. Okay. It's not created. So it's not created. Okay. So it's something that's different from God. It's not created. It's okay. not. Who said it's different from God? Is it different? Is it identical no, it's to not God? Different. Okay. It is God. Wait one second. So it's a way of. One second. It's one an second. adjective. One second. Describing no, God. No, no, no. Listen, listen to what I'm saying. Yes. It's an without, adjective. Without jumping in. Yes. God did not create the property of omnipotence. No, it's part of him. Okay, he didn't create it of omniscience. It's part of God. He didn't create the property of being the creator. Yes, he didn't create it. Yes. He's not created. These okay. are part of him. Good, good. Now, they can't be identical to God. You have a they problem. are part of it. It's an adjective. Wait, let me finish. You're, you're, you're incoherent you're in your understanding. Yeah. If Could I say, can you un can Joshua is a black man. Oh, no, Joshua no. is wearing, Joshua is a strong man. Joshua has got big muscles. Oh. Can yes? I speak? Yes? Mohammed, honestly, the way you cut off, you never actually understand the terms of what we're using, okay? In the argument. I think it's been quite No, easy. no, it's not. It's, yes, not. it's not. I'll use your example. I have the property of being black, okay? I have the property of having black skin. I, Josh, am not identical to that property. You're going to go to the G circle. Oh, let me... I'm sorry. Please stop, honestly. No, no, no. Come on, man. No, no, man. Because, <laughs> no, because I want to... I'm sorry, I'm I was not making jokes when you said your argument. Yeah, okay. Okay. I, am not, I am not identical to the property of being black. If I was, okay, then every other person would have to be me. Because whatever <laughs> person, you're not understanding, okay, the law of identity. You know Leibniz's law? Oh, yes, you know, yes. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so anything that's identical. Don't, don't misrepresent it. I'm not. Go ahead. P if P, okay, proposition P, is identical to P star. Yeah, they're different. All, P and P star are different. One second. If P and P star are identical. No, 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 no. Oh my gosh, let me finish. Okay. Do you know this law? Type it in if you don't understand. No, no, no. no. But you're, you're differentiating between P and P star. Understand what I'm saying. If P and P star are identical, P will have all the same attributes and properties as P star. Do you agree with me? Yes, yes. That's, that's, that's good. Yes. Good. Yes. Okay. So, if. But they're different, yes? Listen to me. If I am identical, you're, you're becoming no, very you, angry now. I don't know why. No, no, I'm not angry. Thank you. I'm sorry if that's coming from yeah, yeah. no. If I'm identical to something else, I have to have the exact same properties as that. Do you agree with me? If yes. you're identical to something, to something else, else yes. I have to have the exact same properties. Yes. Now you just said God is His omnipotence. He's identical. To I you. said that. No, no. What I said. Yes. Because this is about what I said. Yes. Now listen. I said omnipotence yes. is an adjective describing God. But it's a property. It's a, no, I wouldn't use the word property, an attribute of God. That's the same thing. You're no using, problem, I'm using my own word. Okay, so attribute of God. Yes. Now, the attribute that God has yes. of being omnipotent yes. cannot be identical to God. But I'm not saying... If, one second. I'm, I'm, saying, I'm saying it's just an adjective. Yes. Well, I finish. Yes. Now, if God was identical to the attribute of omnipotence, omnipotence would have to have the exact same properties that God has, but that can't be so. Omnipotence does not have omniscience, it does not have perfect goodness. Okay? So it's attribute, one of the attributes. Of yes, it's yes. good. One of the attributes that God has, yes. but it's not identical to God. Now, why are you separating between them? Of course, they have to be separated. No, no, they're not you identical. Know, now, listen, you know why? Now, listen. listen. Is, is your blackness separate from you? Of course, it is. No, it's not. That's, that's where we have to disagree. Because you're saying this is where this is where you're trying to create a fallacy, you know? No, no, what fallacy? Tell me what fallacy. Here's the fallacy. Yes. I asked you: Is your blackness separate from you? 
you said of course it is yes. then you don't know who you are basically and the same thing is you say it, it, it is it's God's omnipotence separate from God you say yes I also you don't know who God is you're a black man God is omnipotent and that's all I have to say about the issue no, no, you, that's all I have to say about it but that argument is so bad it's not it's an argument it's a reality are you black is your Am black? I black? Yes. Yes, but it's blackness an essential attribute of me. Is it? Yes. Are you are you black? No, no, one second. Listen to, what, listen to what you're saying. Are you black? Yes, I'm black. But okay. Is it an essential attribute? Is your, is your blackness separate from you? Listen, listen, I is it an essential? I don't think the juice circle will want you after this one. <laughs> I'm joking. Is it? No, but listen to what you're saying. You'll understand that you are incoherent. Okay. You think I am. No, I think everyone no, thinks no, no, you are. No, no, no. You're, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, you're honestly, an intelligent man. Honestly. Make an impossible case. That's the reality. Can you you are an intelligent man. Can you listen? Making an impossible case. Can you case. listen? Can you listen? Blackness is not an essential attribute. Do you want to have some coffee? No, no, no. Let's all get some coffee. Awesome. I need to pray, man. No, just this last point. Just this last point. I'll clarify this. Blackness, having the attribute of being black, is not an essential attribute of me. What I mean by that is that I can lose my blackness and still exist. Essential attributes are things that you possess that you cannot still exist no, no, and lack. No, 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 no. Yes. No, let me tell you something. No, hold on. You no, are no, talking. No, no, let me, let me no, correct no, no, you. Let me correct let me, you. No, but let me. Let one me second, before you correct me. No, let me correct you. Before you correct me, let me just say this. I make this distinction. You wouldn't. You wouldn't be you if you lose your blackness. Let me just make. You wouldn't be. You second, wouldn't be you second, if you lose your blackness. One second. You know that. One second. I'll just. If you become white can tomorrow, can I just say? You change. You. 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 Contingent attributes and essential attributes. Yes. Omnipotence what? is an, what, a, a necessary. What, what, what an essential attribute is something that a substance must yes, possess yes. in order to exist. A contingent attribute is an attribute that a substance can possess and lose no, and still exist. One second. So, an essential attribute of me is ra the capability of being rational, the capability of being morally aware, the capability. Who told you that? One second. Just. So just if you became morally unaware, you, be, you wouldn't be you. If I didn't, if I didn't have the capability, I wouldn't be. Who told you this? Depends do you want me to tell you how you do you, do you, you, you don't lose your capability to be rational. You just become irrational. Can I tell you? Can I correct you? One that means you know what, Joshua? To be honest with you, to be honest with you, bro, yes. I've, I've noticed that you do, you're doing something. Here. Oh, sorry. Well, no, no, you're, no, I've noticed. I'm doing something wrong. No, 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 it's okay. No, yeah. no, but what you're doing is very clever. You're, you're, it's, it's this posture of I'm always being interrupted. Oh, okay. Oh, sorry. You're not being interrupted now. I've okay. let you speak. Right? Okay. I said three or four times. I want to just make a contribution. Yes. Oh, sorry. You, yes. Yes. Yeah, Joshua. You are defined by exactly the attributes you exhibit at the moment. Okay? Did you know that all of the cells in your body will be replaced? Did you know that? I have no idea. Yes, you know, yeah. All of the cells in your, in your physical body will be replaced. Yes? So when you were 13 years old, which was maybe, uh, you know, 10 years ago, when you were 13 years old, you, you, the, the cells in your body, you were a different guy when you were 13. Yes? You were different. Joshua today is different to the Joshua at 13 years old. Otherwise, when you get married, your wife would have said, I don't want to marry a 13 year old. Yes? She said, I don't want to marry that guy because he's not going to be able to deal with me. Right? The point is this, is that we're changing every... Like Mark said, the only thing that remains constant is change itself. The point I'm making is this. You as Joshua are defined by the, the attributes that you have at the moment. Your distinction between contingent and necessary attributes is a false distinction relate, relating to God. Because let me tell you why. According to both of our theologies, all of the attributes are of God, all of the attributes of God are necessary for Him to be a God. Oh wow, that is really bad that you said that. Yes, you yes. I, I will show you how it's wrong. No, 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 that's, that's, God is defined by His attributes. His attributes are adjectives defining what God is. You're looking at things outwardly right. you're saying that look for instance if i said to you god loses all his power would he still be a god of course he does yeah of course he wouldn't he wouldn't yes then no problem so uh, omnipotence is an essential attribute of god yes I, i've never i've never debated that i've never said that he it isn't how have i said omnipotence isn't an essential attribute of you god? did say that said, omnipotence said, is yeah. not an essential yeah, yeah, yeah. when have i said that did you not say this so what's, what's the point you wanted to make? I of? never said... What's the point you wanted to make? We're still on time, guys. One second, I never said that. <laughs> okay, but can I just comment on what you said, which is really bad. I hope you did not... It's not bad. No, 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 no that's what we believe. No, but... That all of the... Is, if God loses his justice, it does not... I, it's not God. One second. One second. Okay, yes. so... Yes. Yes. You said yes. all attributes of God are necessary to him. That's an issue. Okay. 
you have to have a distinction between essential attributes and contingent Why do we have to? Why? Even when it comes to Why? God. Because there is an attribute of God that God has now. This attribute is this. Having created... Give me an example. One second. Yeah. I'm doing that. Having created Muhammad Hijab. That is, that is an adjective that you can associate with God. That refers no, no, to no, God. That's, yes. That's what you want. No, 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 no. That's, a, once it, that's without, wrong. That's wrong. Wait, without cutting me off. Without cutting me off. That is wrong. One second without cutting me off. Yes. There are attributes of God. God, and you, and I'm happy that you actually use the term adjective. That helps me a lot more. No, no, no. There is an adjective that you have to now ascribe to God. Having created Muhammad That's Hijab. wrong. Yeah, that's wrong Why grammatically. Why? Because his attribute is his creative capacity. He's, he's, he is the creator. Creating what? No, hold on, hold on. He, his ability to create. Hold on. Our ability like. to yes, create. Yes, yes, yes. If, if God did not create anything, he would still be the creator. That is incoherent. Oh, really? Yes. Okay, no problem. I've had this debate with some of those. No, no, no. It's, it's incoherent? Yes, it is. Okay, no problem. Yes. Was there a time where there was no human beings? Yes. Okay, no problem. Has God got the ability to exact punishment? Yes or no? Has, has God, listen to my question, listen to my question. Has God, has God got the ability to exact punishment? On what? On human beings. When they are not created. I'm asking a question. Has God got the ability to exact punishment? On, on, on any ent entity? Oh, yes, yes, yes. yes, no problem. Yes. Oh, good. Now, is that connected to his justice? In your opinion? Is that connected to his justice? Yes. Um, no. Oh, not. so God punishes no. without any no, uh, reason? No, or is it connected to I'll his justice? To you. Okay. It's connected to no, his no, justice? One second, you're answering for me. So Sodom and Gomorrah, no, all those no, things. No, you're answering for me. No, no, no. Can I answer your point? It's, no, it's connected to his justice. No, but you just, I just said no, and then now you're going with... No, let's, the let's not go with this nonsense. It's definitely connected to his justice, okay? No, I mean, number one, I've never said anything that you said is nonsense, so let's be respectful. You said it's incoherent? Yes, but that's different from nonsense. Well, it's okay. very similar. No, no, it's different. Okay, I apologize. Because normally in I retract, I retract. Thank you. You are conflating against attributes with God. God did not possess the property of being the creator prior to him creating. That's nonsense. No, it's not nonsense. nonsense. Now, let me tell you why. The so God became the creator. Oh, Lord, I'm get that. Listen to what Yes, yes, he became the creator. Did he learn it? One second. Am I drawing? Yeah. Was it no, hold on, please. Let it be a like discussion. Okay, okay. You're saying before God created, yes. Forget about the exact human punishment. Yes. Before God created, he was not the creator. No. He wasn't. No. So that means to say that acquisition is based upon action and not ability, in your opinion. No, that's a, that's a false entailment. No, Tell no, you, no, no. If you're going to let me say my point, I'll you are you. a man that weighs Sorry, about man, 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 The reason why you don't understand is because I don't, you don't let me finish my point. I think both of us uh, interrupt no. each other. Okay, yes. Can yes. I interrupt you? Is that fine? Of course. So, why I said God did not have the property of being the creator prior to the creator is because you are completing two different attributes. The ability to create resides in his omnipotence. No, that, no, no, no. yes, no, 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 no. remember, two different things. no, then, no, listen, they're two different things. listen, the ability to do something, you, you're conflating terms now, no, I'm not, can you let me finish my point, omnipotence means power, can you, no, all power, oh my gosh, do you yes. remember the definition of omnipotence that I said, no, but the, 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 your definition is yes. not, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it one more time, it is not the be all and end all definition, doesn't matter, but I'm, all have but doesn't matter, to it. but doesn't matter, refute my definition, say I don't need to refute it, then good, then good, then good, yeah, but what's it? We're gonna, man, we're gonna talk past each other, okay? If all the time you're saying, I'm gonna go with my definition, and I'm gonna use it, and I'm gonna refute all your arguments from my definition, but your definition, I'm not going with it. No, so I'm That's saying, exactly no, no, because I'm defending my position, and I'm giving you a reason yeah, why I'm defending it. Vernacularly means power, all power. No, no. Go on the dictionary and find listen, it. Listen. Get, get the word of omnipotence. What? Okay, go on the Stanford uh, Encyclopedia. No, 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 go on the Stanford. Why not? Go on, uh, vernacularly, I said vernacular. Are we which, talking about a philosophical issue? No, no, no. Yes, or not? No, uh, yeah. who, who told you that now that Stanford has become the, 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 the what do you call it? Do you the even know what it is? The Stanford University, yes. No. Is that Stanford? Stanford? Yeah, the, the, the philosophy. They've got a, a philosophy, uh, kind of like a Wikipedia, but philosophy way. So, it's, yeah. So, no, why is it respected? Why, 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 do why is it respected? I, whether it's respected or not. No, but why is it respected? Definitions are contested. No, but listen, why is it respected by people in the field? Who cares if it's respected or not? Yeah. It's not the only definition. Sorry, one second. I don't care if it's, I can define anything. But what I want to go with is the shared definition of it's the... Not, it's not consensus. What? There's no consensus Let me finish, please. I, what I want to go with is the shared definition. I'm using the word so much. Can, can I? Let me just say my yeah, so I want to say your final thing. Say your final thing. I want to go. I need to pray. I want to go. Let's pray. Let's pray. 
I want to go with the shared definition of the philosophical community. The shared definition There's no such thing as that. That's the most nonsense thing you've said all day. Why is it the most nonsense thing? Sorry, sorry, please go on again. Shared definition of the philosophical community. Yes. No, man. Why is that not? Most definitions are contested. Almost actually all definitions yes. are contested. But what is the shared oh, definition? No, no, the, no, no. There's no. There isn't one. No, no, there isn't. For most, for most terms, there is, cont there is contest on definitions. Yes. Give me any word you want in the, in the, in the English language and I, that has a philosophical um, uh, implication yeah. and I will tell you yes. that there is some discussion even if we look at that word multidisciplinary in a multidisciplinary way you'll find that there are different definitions there is no you can't compel me to not, idea. Not, I have to, this, Sorry, you, this is what you've done Joshua okay yeah, let me tell you once again your thesis that you spent two and a half years on that you that you spent a lifetime on and thinking about is it boils down to a definition okay if I'm able to show you that we don't need to take that definition then plus, you cannot superimpose your argument on me it's, you have a semantical argument has no re uh, semblance or no uh, it has no bearing on the physical world around us that's the reality you can you can make a you can make a false argument on the computer and that's how com that's how computer science works and it can still be something which is not true but you can still coherently put it so the, the point is this sorry Joshua to put it to put it nicely for you the father, if he is sovereign, is paternally besought of all, then it makes sense to say he cannot be dependent upon the son. You're saying he's interdependent, that must mean he's dependent. That means you contradict yourself. Okay. That's, that's just now, can I ask you? Can I ask you? What, if I, what if I define sovereignty differently? No, uh, we go back to our text, you're a Christian, I'm a Muslim, yes? And vernacularly, yes. I have defined sovereignty... According to your view? According to your view? No, 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 I'm talking about the Bible here. Tell me where it says sovereignty in that No, no, look at the Hebrew and the Old Testament. Tell me exactly where I want that. No, 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 look anywhere. No, tell me. Anywhere with the word sovereignty. No, I don't want anywhere, I want evidence. Anywhere, no, no, evidence. evidence. Any, tell me now, are you saying God is not sovereign? I've never said that. Now, should you... See, Muhammad, Muhammad, how do you define Muhammad, sovereignty? Muhammad. How do you define sovereignty? You just made it to the Hebrew roots. Muhammad, you just made a claim. Yes. Back up your claim. Oh, I'm back so up. you said to me there is a definition of the sovereignty of the Bible. Not only tell me what. Okay, there's many. Elohim. Even the word Elohim. Yes, Elohim. Verse one. Uh, it's all that. over Genesis. I don't want to know all over. I want no, 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 no. All over Genesis, the word Elohim is used. Okay, yeah, but I don't. From I Genesis don't one, verse. Genesis Tell chapter one. Verse. From uh, uh, Genesis chapter one, verse yeah. one, even. Yes. Yeah. Where, uh, uh, yeah. Elohim means uh, means in the Hebrew. In the Bible? Get the no, no, no problem. I'll tell you in Hebrew. Okay, what's the evidence? Elohim. Yes. Elo yeah. literally means the all-powerful one. Yeah. Yes. yes. So this, we're using the Hebrew here. All powerful, not sovereignty. No, I'm giving you. Uh, we're going back to omnipotence first. Oh, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. You're going. No, no, hold on. Mahmoud, what are you talking about? Uh, uh, Joshua, please. Your, your definition. You just said to me. You just said to me, Josh. Joshua, you, said to me, Josh you said Josh. Joshua, leave omnipotence. We're talking about sovereignty. No, no, I'm giving. Now you're saying I'm you're going back you to omnipotence. I'm giving you both. No problem. Either way. But then you didn't let me use omnipotence. I'm, I'm giving you. No, but Mahmoud, you're not arguing correctly. Okay. You said we need to. Mahmoud, you said we need to go with one definition of sovereignty. No problem. Okay. Now I ask you. I ask you one thing. That's yes, all I yes. ask you. Give me the evidence that backs up your claim of the definition of sovereignty. Yeah, now I'm, then, hold on, hold on. you went to a before, before, No, no, because you, you're running away because it's very clear what I'm, I'm doing. I'm right here, I'm not running away. No, no, you are. You no, are. Literally, I'm not no, running away. No, 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 because what, I can what, say it for the whole Joshua, way. listen. Elohim is the, is the Hebrew equivalent for the all-powerful one. Yes, it's, it's a two-part construction. I have no issue. No, please, let, let me finish. Okay, sorry, sorry. You have to interrupt me. Sorry, I'll let you finish. Elo means the all-powerful one. Him is the, the majestic plural in the Hebrew language. Your definition of omnipotence that you initially gave to us, a philosophical definition, contradicts, number one, this uh, biblical Hebrew understanding of Elohim. That's number one. Number two, the understanding, the Old Testament understanding, yes, of Sovereignty is also in line with the Quranic definition. No, no, show me that. Some of these. Where is the definition of sovereignty? So we'll get. Uh, no, I, what, no, I, I can because no, I'm not knowledgeable. You're the Christian. No, you're making a claim. Okay, okay, show me where it says sovereign in the Bible. I didn't say that. You made the claim about I don't sovereignty. Know where sovereign in the Bible. Then why are you talking about it? Then? No, no, no. I don't you know just said Christians have this definition no, no, of sovereignty. That's, that's a false I mean, argument. Just because I don't know the reference, it doesn't mean I. Uh, no, I no, no, no. I'm asking you. You're the speaker. Think about your reason. I That's can make that reasoning, no, my no, friend. No, no, You're I'm, asking me where. No, I'm I saying, don't know think about your reasoning. Just one second. I can make a claim now that the Quran has this definition of this. Okay? 
What would you first go and say to me? Where does it say that in the Quran? Yeah, I no, can't no, say, no, do you know no, what? No, I, no, I, can't no, say, no. I know where it is. No, no, if I, I can't tell I, you I, now. I, I don't know I, where it is. Sorry. I, on, that's what Joshua, you said Joshua, I said yes. to you, I am the student. You are the teacher, all right? No, but you're making no, it No, no, no. Joshua, listen to me. Yes. If I'm the student and you're the Christian expert, why are you depending upon my knowledge of references in the Bible? I'm not. And my lack of... back up what you said. Hold on. Don't make if, false claims. Listen, Joshua. That's what I'm saying. I'm saying to you, does the word... Is, my question to you, does the Old Testament use the word sovereign in reference to, uh, to uh, the Father? Maybe it does. But you're making Maybe a claim it, no, 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 no. You don't know you're the Bible? Making, okay, listen. I'm asking you a question. I'm asking, no, Joshua, simple question. Does the Old Testament use the word sovereign in, re in relation to God? Probably not. I don't know. Yeah, okay, fine. Now what, what you, you have say? to what you have to what do you now, say? what you have to do now research for both of us since you don't know this you should know it you're Wait. the Christian expert Wait, what's it? No, hold on hold on Mamet, 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 Mamet. you're not you're, 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 you're not you know you keep you're, 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 you're not you're not you're a skilled debater let me tell you that right now let me tell you why let me tell you why Joshua please one second let me finish my can I just say can I just say this point about skilled debater you're a skilled debater because what you have done You've made a claim that the Bible and Quran share a definition of sovereignty. I then said to you, please back up what that is yeah, I don't through, have the references. through the Bible. Then you say to me, Do I have the Bible. So what? So I, I tried to give you the Bible. <laughs> Adam al I don't. I tried to give you the Bible. Because you have, I don't have the references here. I'm asking you no, for references. No, but listen, listen. What you've done then, I said back up your claim that you made. Uh, okay, fine. You say, I don't know where it is. I can't back up my claim. So, does so that now you're saying to me, so, <laughs> that's 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 man. I'm just Joshua, saying, that's I'm saying no. I'm, you're the Christian man, expert. Man, man, man. If you came to you're me, reasoning. listen to me, Joshua, please. If you came to me and said to me, where in the Quran does Allah use the word sovereign? I will say, actually, listen, if you ask me, I will did say, I ask you that? No. Problem, did I ask now, you that now, you're, now you're becoming pedantic. But and Muhammad, did I ask you that Everyone can see you're clutching at straws. Everyone can see here. I'm asking you, what am I... No, look, it's something we can research. Guys, can you can, can someone get the word sovereign in the Bible? I mean, I don't have the reference in front of me what what are you what are you talking to me about here just because i don't have the reference in front of me doesn't mean it's not there you're the expert i i expect to do something i'll change him to an mma fight yeah yeah see you later um no problem no i'll do uh okay what's your what's your section for my speech yes all i said to you was you made a claim please back it up that's all i said then you try to turn it and say, but you need to know where your references are. Why are you going to make the claim about sovereignty? You made the claim. So that's all I said to you. Please no provide me evidence that backs up your no. definition yes, yes. that the Quran has exactly If I give it to you, what will you, what will you, what will you do? I'm a problem. I learned from you. No issue. I'm so, uh, <laughs> what, who's this one? Is this yours? This, this guy. Okay. Huh? No problem, man. Oh, no, 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 we need, we need to talk. Um, no, no, no. Do you want to carry this one? Yeah, no, in a second? Can I just have a chance? Okay, I'll have a chance. Yes, wait, hold on, hold on. Yes, no, wait, hold on. Uh, what do you want? He wants the word sovereign in the Old Testament. Okay, Sam, so, no, hold on. You asked me for something. Okay, you're right, right. Right. Can you find it? I'll just... I got it. Okay, what is it? Psalms uh, chapter 103, verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his sovereignty rules all over. So what's the problem with that? Okay. Now how is that the definition okay, of sovereignty? No, 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 Tell okay. me. So, so that, no, we've got sovereignty here, yeah? I have no problem. They use now, the word. Now the Bible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Now let's go to Psalms 103, 19, yeah? Oh. Oh. You are you are a Christian scholar, you're going to help us, yes? Read this brother. Read. Read that, my friend. Yes. No, 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 no. It's not even there. Yeah, it's not even there. Okay. What well, well, you continue. have to do? We'll continue. We'll continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Man, fine. Okay, but. Can I just say my last statement and then you say your last statement? So that's it, and then we do it. So, so the, I'm just last saying, statement, last I, I won't call me, you don't come For me, it's very clear, the God of the Old Testament, yes, he is sovereign. Even the God of the New Testament, he is sovereign. The definition, linguistic definition of the word sovereign, yes, we can both ascertain easily. I mean, it's going to take a quick search, man. It's a quick search. We can both ascertain means eternally besought of all, in, independent, 
uh, it doesn't require anything. I am just saying, if God is sovereign in this way, he cannot be in independent and then dependent on the sun at the same time. Simple thing. That's the Quranic argument, Allah is sovereign. Allah is eternally besought. Say it's Allah one and only. Allah is the eternally besought of all, the sovereign. Lam yalid. He has no children. Walam yulad. He is not the child of anyone. Walam yakun lahu kufwan ahad. And there is nothing like him. Yes? Okay. Um, okay, last one I want to say. I've never said that God is not sovereign in the Old Testament. I've never said that the Christian understanding of sovereignty is not something that we hold to. We understand that God is sovereign. We understand that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are sovereign. All I have said is that dependency or interdependency does not negate from omnipotence first which is when we, and it doesn't even negate from his sovereignty because when we understand sovereignty saying god is sovereign over all okay now, that, what, yeah. i didn't comment on you oh, now does that mean that god is um that god cannot be dependent within himself because when i'm using the term god i'm referring to the trinity so the father son and holy spirit can be interdependent and that doesn't negate from the sovereignty of god aka the trinity so okay so well, thank you very much the people will, will be the judge of the right. you no, 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 same, same. Yeah. You know how it gets here. You know how it gets here. But good speaking to you, man. Um, okay, yeah, so I had a good, sort of good conversation with Mohammed Ijab. Um, what we were sort of talking about, he brought an argument that if God is interdependent, um, he can he cannot be sovereign or he cannot have the property of omnipotence. What I then tried to show him was that it doesn't negate from God's sovereignty if the Father is um, interdependent on the Son and the Spirit and the other persons as well. There is no issue with it. God can be um, sovereign and the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit be interdependent because it doesn't negate from it. What I was trying to argue was when we say God is sovereign, we're saying God is sovereign over all things outside of himself. And so within the Trinity, within the Godhead, Father, Son and Holy Spirit can be interdependent without negating from the sovereignty. And then also he was talking about omnipotence and I was trying to explain to him that God, when we say omnipotence, we use a specific definition which says God is um, able to perform any action that is logically possible. Now God being, um, uh, sorry, there being the Father, Son and Holy Spirit within the Godhead doesn't negate from God being omnipotent him being able to perform any action that's logically possible. So what I really felt was that there, was, um, there wasn't really a clarification in terms and when I tried to clarify myself, he wasn't willing to go with that definition and then he was bringing something completely tangential. Um, so for me, I think it's very important that we firstly understand the definitions, we then try and go with that and I don't believe that he did that, so I don't believe he was successful in trying to refute uh, the doctrine of the Trinity.